Hi, this is Freddie News Review, the podcast. And now, and now, America's independent voice, Rob Reddy. Rob Reddy. Every Wednesday, it is The Answer with Audrain Jackson. Audrain Jackson, how are you? I'm fine. How are you, Rob? Wonderful, wonderful. What are we talking about today? We're talking about the true meaning of gratitude. Let's do it. I cried because I had no shoes until I met a man who had no feet. That old Persian proverb was the sign-off for a radio DJ each day. I was only a kid at the time, but I understood the point he was trying to make. And saying it every day to his listeners helped the message stick in my mind. But I didn't know the full impact of it until I became an adult and realized it spoke to gratitude. Being thankful is observed once a year in America with the Thanksgiving holiday, although some date the occasion back to the pilgrims feasting after yielding a bountiful crop. The holiday didn't become a national observance until President Lincoln proclaimed it in 1863. The country was in the midst of a brutal civil war with losses on both sides. The president had no idea of whether his fragile nation would survive unified or divided, but he proclaimed thanks for what he termed the blessings of fruitful fields and healthful skies. It was quite an act of faith by Lincoln at the time that often goes unnoticed. Instead of focusing on the obvious carnage and destruction of war, he reminded the nation there were many blessings to be counted. He shifted the mindset to positive things like robust manufacturing and strong shipping industries. He recognized these as gracious gifts of mercy from on high. So he proclaimed they should be reverently and gratefully acknowledged with one heart and voice by the whole American people. He invited citizens to set apart and observe the last Thursday of November as a day of thanksgiving and praise. Many of us, including myself, often take thankfulness for granted. We recognize ourselves as grateful people until something horrible comes crashing down and we are reminded how fragile life is and how much we do not stop to appreciate the many blessings. Twenty years ago, there was a man driving from California to a vacation home in Nevada in a new car his son, a professional athlete, bought him. The vacation home was also a gift from his son. His wife, daughter, and infant granddaughter traveled with him. Before leaving, he turned to his son to say goodbye, telling him he would call to let him know they got in okay. His son never received that call. His father was only 15 minutes away from his destination when the car he was driving hit a center divide, ejecting the passengers. The accident took his life, his wife, and his daughter, leaving only the granddaughter as sole survivor. This is a true-life story of former NBA player and Denver Nuggets head coach Brian Shaw. In an interview with the Denver Post, Shaw said he spent that morning at a barbecue with friends in Oakland and by the afternoon was sitting in a mortuary in Las Vegas. At only 27, he took on the task of raising his niece, an 11-month-old baby, while still playing full-time in the NBA. The child, now 20, is a pre-med college student. Shaw said the main thing he learned after the accident is that tomorrow isn't promised. It put everything in perspective, helping him focus on what's really important in life. There are ways to remind yourself to be appreciative when you forget. I borrowed one idea from the best-selling book, The Secret. I found a smooth-edge rock that fit neatly in the palm of my hand. When I get off track, I squeeze that rock in my hand, close my eyes, and think deeply about all the things I am grateful for in my life. Then I take those thoughts and write them down in a gratitude list. When I finish, my attitude has shifted from what I don't have to being grateful for what I do have. Maintaining a mindset of thankfulness when facing some of life's toughest battles is difficult. It is a constant, ongoing process we never fully master. It doesn't take much to quickly lose our appreciation. Driving in heavy traffic is one way we are challenged. It is easy to become angry and reactive when others swerve in our lane, drive too fast, or cut us off with no warning. We should remain calm when others around us are losing their heads. It's a good time to reflect on how fortunate we are to have reliable transportation because there are people with no vehicle or means to get around, like in Cameroon. 
or many have to take taxis because there is no public transportation. President Lincoln had it right 150 years ago when he set aside a day for all of us to stop and collectively give thanks. The world we live in challenges us in so many ways that it is easy to forget to appreciate what we have. When you regularly recognize your blessings, not just every now and then, but daily, you will ultimately master the true meaning of gratitude. Well said. Audrain Jackson with the answer, always delivering what you need to know right here on Wednesday. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Have a great holiday. You've been listening to Ready News Review, the podcast with America's independent voice. Rob Ready, presented by Reading Communications Incorporated. For all the pressing news you need to know, log on to www.readingnewsreview.com.